another episode of Gap Mentality. My name is Clear and I'm joined by... Hi there, this is Shops. Good afternoon, guys. Yes, good afternoon, Shops. How are you? I'm doing good. It's sunny over here in Manila. Ah, so, that's good to know. Mainit though, pero uh, yun nga. Kahit pa paano naman may hangin-hangin na. Kasi kanina, uh, maalinsangan. Ma ma oh, okay. Uh, I think, uh, do you think summer is on its way? I think so, pero I'm uh -huh. keeping my fingers crossed that it won't be the worst. Ay, oh, Para oh. namang hindi tayo sanay, pero, you know, we're still hoping <laughs> na uh -huh. it would be tolerable considering mm -hmm. how February was. It was really a good kind of weather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tama, tama. Oo, kasi this is, uh, the, the summer back home in the Philippines is ang tinde. <laughs> Oh. But I hope, right. it's, I hope it's not going to be too bad. Dito kasi it's still winter, so medyo malamig. But in our region, it hardly snows. Kung mag-snow man, it melts almost the moment it hits the ground. Mm -hmm. it, it melts kasi maraming buildings, maraming... Uh, tawag dito, maraming... Masyadong maraming houses dito sa area namin. Pero kung doon ka a little bit sa medyo malayo-layo, medyo mataas, yan, malatatagal yung snow. Kaya naiingkit ako doon sa mga ano, medyo maraming, mal niebe. maraming niebe. Kaya yon But anyway, it's um, it's good once again to have another um, discussion, another episode. And uh, we would like to say thank you to sa mga nanood last time on our, the part one of our series on uh, Henry the Eighth Six Wives. Yan. Yes. So, we met um, wives number one and two, Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn. And this time, we will meet. Maitatawid namin to, two wives, <laughs> three to six. Yes. <laughs> okay, ayon. So please feel free to comment, um, to uh, ask questions. Kung kaya namin sagutan yung mga tanong nyo, why not? Based yeah, we will do our best. And hello, hello to those who are currently watching. Guys, we so appreciate your support and again we're very happy na natutuwa kayo sa na, na offer namin so far yes. here in gap mentality okay so i just want to say hi to those who are watching si amy uh one of our colleagues from aig and my high school teacher <laughs> hi miss <Wow>. makutai <laughs> <laughs> she Hello, just, just just want to say na alam mo sabi ko sa kanya when I reach when I reached out to her again after so many years sabi ko I always remember the poem that you that you assigned sa amin noon yung the passionate shepherd to his love by Sir Walter by Christopher Marlowe oh. so tiba yung Elizabethan times pa so sabi ko na alala ko pa siya ngayon so yun yeah, thank you sana sana hindi sana hindi kayo mabor Miss, Miss, kasi is baka medyo mahaba ito, but I hope you enjoy it and uh, please feel free to share it. Um, for those who are also watching, mag-comment kayo, ask questions, or kung ano man yung whatever is in your noggin. Yeah. Yeah, ilabas lang. Just okay, ano pa? Yeah, so, so, ano, so sino ang pag-uusapan natin today, Shops? Uh, we have the remaining four wives of, uh, of course, our Tudor King, Henry VIII. We have Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. You might think that there are a lot because there are four of them, but unlike Catherine um, of Aragon and um, Anne Boleyn, their wives are like pretty tiny <laughs> or not that too dramatic as opposed to the first two. But of course, there are also um, the sad, uh, sad instances that were inevitable during that time. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, the last four wives, their reigns are very short compared. Yes. Well, Anne's, Anne's reign was also short. She was only queen for a thousand days. I think uh -huh. Catherine was the longest, no? Because she's been married to Henry for twenty years. Twenty years. Pero yung last four, kasi it's not as Hindi siya ganun kahaba ang reigns ang reigns nila. So we don't know much about them but based on what Shops and I have read and researched the last couple of weeks last couple of months uh, I hope it's going to shed some light into their lives kung ano pa talaga ang nangyari what 
what were their lives before they married Hendy. Maybe we could also talk about that. And yon. So please feel free to comment, to ask questions or whatever. And of course, if you have any suggestions, kung ano gusto niyo pag-usapan namin next time, then please feel free to drop us a comment. Okay, so right. babasahin namin yan. All right, so okay. yeah. So, so are so we ready? Share. Yep, you want to share your screen? Yes, um, I'll share my screen now. Hold on. Okay, just let me know if you see it. Ayan. Um, yan, para ma-present ko na. Are we all good? Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Clear siya. All righty. So, we have wives three to six of Henry VIII. So, let's start off with the third wife. Technically, we have Jane Seymour. So, if you notice, guys, don't be surprised if they don't have a year and a day of birth because during the Tudor era, um, women, pag pinapanganak sila, usually hindi nire-record ang birthdays ng mga babae. Mga lalaki lang talaga. Kaya makikita ninyo dito, um, born around 1508, around like this, around like this, because, you know, understandably, they're women. So, during those times, they give, of course, importance if a, a man is born or if a baby oh. boy is born. That's oh. the time that they record the day, the day and, you know, um, the month of birth of mm -hmm. the kid, of the child. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Uh -oh. Oh, it's sad, no? Pero, <laughs> pero uh -oh. that was, the, that they were living in different times, unlike today, di ba? Pero yun nga, sometimes they would just write just the year. Yep. Even, even with Anne, we don't really yes. know exactly when she was born. Pero may certain year but same thing right. with the rest of the women during that time hindi nila talaga nila record the exact um, date of birth yeah even if you were if you were of noble birth if you were a woman or a, um, a little girl then you know you are not that important unfortunately, unfortunately. but uh, only you become important when you play uh when you get to you know get to be married to someone of high rank which is what happened to Jane, particularly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, she was born to Sir John Seymour and Marjorie Wentworth. Um, she came from a wealthy family and was a descendant of Edward III. So, good, um, good genes. Good stock. Yeah. Good stock. Okay, and their family owned more than 100 manors and five castles. So, this particular lady came from, kumbaga, good pedigree. Mayaman. Uh, mayaman. Mayaman sila. <laughs> mayaman. Uh -oh, may kaya. So, she was, um, um, it wasn't surprising na ma-attract ma si Henry sa kanya because of her nobility. But apart from that, uh, she was very known as a timid, sweet, and reserved woman who, who um, uh, what do you call it? Who was part of Queen Anne's uh, ladies during that time? Yes, and it's it's being this it's being argued nga if she was a beauty, because yeah. she was known as plain Jane. If you look at her per uh -huh. portrait, wala siyang plain. Parang hindi siya yes. right. But um, there are some 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 uh, historians who said that she was beautiful. She was the typical English rose, uh, mm -hmm. blonde, pale. Yon, <laughs> namumutla. <laughs> unlike, unlike Anne, Anne kasi did, wasn't a, the typical English rose. She was brunette. She had a, a darker skin. Parang swarthy pa nga ang description eh. She wasn't pale. Unlike her sister Mary, who became the king's mistress, she, who was blonde and uh, yes. fair. So yon, yeah. yung mga... Yung mga mapuputi ang considered nilang ano, beautiful. So si right. Jane, maybe she was considered beautiful because she was, maybe because she was, ano, uh, pale. <laughs> oh, yeah. hi, Kit. Thank you for watching <laughs> and then liking. Ayun. So tama Hello. ka doon. Mm -mm. Ayun, diba? So, but unlike, and, unlike mm -hmm. Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn, um, Jane wasn't not that well educated compared to these women, uh, but she knew how to read and write uh, her name. Her name. Um, yeah, but one thing that, as you can see here, she she knew how to read and write her name. However, um, 
she she's more proficient in household chores and other hobbies such as gardening and needlework which mm -hmm. you know during the time were were something that women ought to do uh, yes yes so there parang ano sila yun yung that was what what was expected of you if you were a woman kailangan marunong uh, sa household management kaya most of them nagdi needlework or uh, ano pa ba they should uh, parang i think some women were taught how to play uh, the lute or the virgin yes. of to sing and to dance not much were not much importance was given to other aspects of education like languages, um, philosophy, right. uh, sciences. That's <clears throat> for that was for the men. But then again, uh, for there were some women who gave who were given um, excellent education, like Anne and Catherine. Mm -hmm. Well, during that time when um, Anne and Henry's uh, marriage were was already rocky. Uh, what they call this there was this guy called nicholas carew who was so against the Boleyns, who sided with with the seymours and particularly thought of using jane as uh, ano a pawn uh, parang oh etong si queen anne saka si ano si king natin medyo on the rocks na yung relationship so i'm sure in no time magahanap na naman ng bagong um mistress itong si 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 king henry so he he sort of coached jane to to captivate um the king as um his marriage with with anwar was already on the rocks which is another unfortunate you know um experience for for Anne, but it is what it is that's what happened we all know how it all went down uh the last time that we went live uh our queen lost her head and did not produce a male heir um mm -hmm. for for henry and this was the difference between Anne and Jane. So I'll let you continue. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> well, parang there, the difference was night and day. If uh, Anne, yeah. was, Anne was loud, she, has, she had a sharp tongue, she was very witty. Compared to Jane, nga, she was sweet, she was timid. Um, like she's like a head head down, so very stark contrast from Anne, and of course stark contrast from Catherine of Aragon. Talagang kasi tung dalawang previous wives were pretty feisty, uh, right. but Anne, but um, what's her name? Jane. <laughs> Jane was very different. She's very she was very timid. So it's like what Shop said. Um, this man, Sir Nicholas Carew, coached Jane on how to captivate Henry all the more. So she was advised to use the same tactics as Anne did. Mm -hmm. uh, remain chaste while, right. wel while welcoming his advances. She welcomed his affection, she welcomed his attention, in entertain niya, but she insisted on remaining chaste, hindi siya bumigay. So it was the same advice to um, Jane that she keeps her chastity, she remains uh what do you call it remain vir remain a virgin yeah, virtuous uh, and modest yes. and i think she was handed a bag of coins by the king and she sort of like defied it and told like the the messenger that if i could die a thousand deaths or something i would do it uh, just as long as she wouldn't end up a mistress to to the king and that all the more drew henry closer to her or attracted mm -hmm. more um attracted her more to to henry so i'm yes. sorry and that's right so she 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 declined the 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 gold coins but she kept the letter so mm -hmm. regalo and but she kept the letter so that impressed henry so much i guess that's one of the reasons why he got attracted to her siguro nagsawa na Nagsawa na si Henry sa kakadebate. <laughs> Pakikipag-debate. I think he got tired. <laughs> sa pakikipag-discussion with a, with a very strong woman. Gusto siguro niya. Ah, ano eh. Ang headstrong. Oh, sobrang headstrong ni Anne. Mm -hmm. Na parang ilang taon din niyang tiniis. Hindi naman tiniis. Pero mina, I mean, he, he, he found that uh, attractive. He, mm -hmm. he fell for it. Diba? Mm -hmm. 
And uh, siguro nga, and there came a point that he he was tired of it. He wanted someone who would be submissive to him naman. And mm-hmm. in came Jane. Um, kumbaga, yeah. that uh, checked all his marks. Mm-hmm. And it so happened that... Um, Yun nga, he was already drawn and gusto rin naman siya ni Jane. And yun nga, this woman was sort of wise. But then again, she wasn't that obvious na she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I guess she knew she knew what she was doing because she's been in court for for a long time. As she was lady right. waiting for Catherine of Aragon as well. So she uh-huh. knew the workings of the court. So medyo alam na rin niya yung pasikot-sikot. So alam niya kung paano siya, pa- paano niya it, it, she knew how to deal with situations like these. So mm-hmm. she was pretty wise and very subtle lang siya. Right. So ayun nga, Henry married her privately 11 days after Anne Boleyn's execution. And that wasn't and it wasn't even not like at long. Kung baga, malamig, malamig pa yung bangkay ng, ano, ng pangalawa niyang asawa, eto na, pinakasalan na siya, di ba? So mm. that was how, uh, how, how, how do we say it, um, quick Henry was in, in deciding. Uh, mm. That was how, how crazy he was in terms of um, siring an heir. You know, he, he did, really didn't waste time. Parang, oh, sige ko, 11 days. May bago na akong, ano, may bago na akong prospect. May bago na akong pwedeng gawing, uh, maging nanay ng mga anak ko. But the thing was, she was never crowned queen. No, she that, was never crowned queen. Right. So, if we may move on. So, we know that she was lady in waiting since the time of Catherine of Aragon. So, understandably, Jane is a staunch Catholic. So, her her religious convictions made her popular amongst the commoners and the courtiers who would hope na bumalik si Henry into the, the Catholic faith because of, you know, what he had to do in order for him to, to marry Anne during that time, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. So she was, um, think people were thinking, the Catholics were thinking she might be the figurehead that they need, na, you know, na pwedeng influence kay Henry to abandon the Reformation altogether and go back to the one true church. <laughs> the one true church. Uh-huh. Uh, so, but the, then again, um, what happened was, what what happened again, Shopee, when she was trying to lobby this to Henry? This, because uh-huh. at, during that time, there was already rebellions called, like one is the uh, Pilgrimage of Grace. Yeah. As you yeah. can see here, the, the pilgrimage of grace. So prior to that, um, sh- she secured a reconciliation between Henry and his eldest daughter, and that would be Mary, na fellow Catholic, uh, mm-hmm. fellow Catholic. But the thing is, I don't think it did work out because, de ba? Kung magamalalim masya, the 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 wounds or were too were too deep and. Yeah. yeah, too deep, and it wasn't that an easy recon- reconciliation to do, considering what Henry did uh, prior. So, if I were Mary, it would be also very difficult for me to forgive my father because of what he did to to my mother, and the, to even change um, religion, right? So, it yeah. was really um, something unforgivable at that point. But the thing was, since she was a staunch Catholic, she she was really um, let's say let's let's just use the word pushy. She was pushy, okay. um, and she was really uh, what do you call this? Um, persistent in mm-hmm. in wanting Henry to embrace the the Catholic faith yet again. Pero tumating na sa point na talagang na inis na si Henry sa kanya. Para why do you keep on pushing this thing mm-hmm. sa akin when if if I were to remind you what happened to my first two wives, so if if you know your place and mm-hmm. if you you love your life, I guess you you really wouldn't. If you, like your, if you love uh, your head too much, uh, if you love your head too much, you will stop and you would know your place. Mm-hmm. So I guess she listened. Yeah, after that she backed off. <laughs> I think uh, she learned the the lesson from. From Anne, uh, she she was mm-hmm. she 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 thought na oh, sige wag na lang kasi mukang malae. 
Oh, oh. So, Para kahit was, i-push ko to, yeah. wala, walang mangyayari. Which was the wise thing to do kasi you can never uh, you can never argue with Henry and at that time like what you've said there was already a change in his behavior na. Right. So he he he, he could be very generous and then very cruel the next. So it's re- it was really better that she decided to back off. Right. So again, uh, it was a, a wise move and you can't say that Jane wasn't a, th- a thinking woman during that time. I mean, um, with all the plans that she had at the back of her head when uh, after she got married to Henry, and you know for a fact that she wanted things done as well. So mm-hmm. we, you, I, I can't say that this was just a timid woman, I guess. Mm-hmm. So kumpaga, alam din niya yung gusto niyang gawin, pero the thing was, she just didn't have that, uh, what do you call this, not enough feistiness, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, not Parang enough feistiness. Not, not enough feistiness at all. Or you know, ano dun yung fear na since the king elevated you, he could easily do away with you. So I guess that's yeah. another another thing that's weighing on her mind. Mm-hmm. Kaya she decided to just back off. But the thing is, she became very victorious when mm-hmm. she finally conceived on January of 1537 after seven months of marriage with Henry VIII. So, mm-hmm. uh, kung claim to fame ko to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, claim to fame niya to. Kasi tagumpay. Kasi, of course, kaya ka nga pinakasala ng hari. Kasi you, you gotta be able to sire him an heir. And true enough, you know, she was very successful and she was able to give birth to a son and she named, they named him Edward on October 12, 1537 at Hampton Court Palace. So this was really, really one of the most joyful days of Henry, I can imagine. Mm, of course, I think it was, that was his longed for, um, longed for heir, longed for son. And yes. finally, ito na. So he was very happy. Um, he, I, I've read that he had bonfires. Uh-huh. Command he, he commanded bonfires to be lit, the bells to be told. Um, very, sobrang, very ecstatic mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, that it finally happened. So, of course, you know, give the man, give the man the joy <laughs> of uh, celebrating of finally having a son. Yung kanya obsession na tupad na din. Yeah. So in and it uh, it happened with wife number three, and that's our Jane Seymour. But the festivities didn't last long. Unfortunately, after Edward was christened. She died nine days later due to puerperal fever, which was an uh, an infection that can occur after childbirth. And she was buried at Windsor Castle in St. George's Chapel. So it was learned that, you know, Henry took her death very, very seriously, really hard. And Henry wore black for months after her mm-hmm. death. And he also waited until 1540 to remarry and that was three years she died mm-hmm. october 24 1537 and jane was the the only one of his six wives to be buried in the same tomb as he was so it was like the love of his life i suppose mm-hmm. yeah i think so and it's also sad that they didn't get some time to sp- more time to spend together and sabing an ibang historian said uh, jane didn't live long enough to bore him yeah. <laughs> but I think there would come a time that he would eventually get bored of her. Uh-oh. <laughs> Since Henry was, so, was very fickle. So I, I think it was possible that he would eventually get bored of her but since she gave him the son that he longed for, talagang nasa pedestal na talaga si Jane for him. Yeah. She was raised uh, to to that to that level talaga kasi again you you were she was able to sire him a son and that to him was paramount if if I wed you you got to be able to give me an heir and mm-hmm. true enough that was what um Jane did unfortunately she wasn't she was she wasn't crowned queen because of um funds Fun, oh. Kasi ang chika, ang chika daw, hindi raw, hinihintay daw muna ni Henry na mga anak ng boy, si Jane, Uh-oh. bago siya i-crown. But the truth was, depleted yung treasury. Mm-hmm. And um, they were waiting uh, for the 
na ma, ma, ma revert sa crown yung mga dissolved monasteries uh-uh. kasi dun nandun yung pera uh-uh. kasi that, at that time it was the reformation so they were um, dismantling churches monasteries yes. so nandun yung pera and since there wasn't it wasn't reverted to the crown yet walang pera so there was no money to spend on her coronation so nito to yung hinihintay lang ni Henry na mga anak si Jane <laughs> I think he really lang talagang funds walang funds I think he really intends to crown her yeah me too me too and I, I also felt that he really loved um Jane, uh, Jane with a passion Mm-mm. Kasi he can't wait eh, di ba? Kaya gumawa na siya ng paraan para uh, ichugi si Anne. So, uh, obviously, okay. obviously, I think he was attracted to her or may, and I think he loved her. Maybe he was attracted attracted lang and then eventually the love came, especially yes. when she gave birth. I think that was, yun nga sabi mo, the crowning moment ni Jane. Oo, uh, yun yung ano, kumbaga talagang high end, I'm sure Jane felt high and mighty when when um, she found out that she she was bearing um, a child. So, lalo na nung, nung nanganak siya at nalaman niyang lalaki. So, that to you guys, that would be our wife number three, Jane Seymour. And now, let's go on to wife number four, Anne of Leaves. So, as you can see, may around na naman tayo. So, she was born around 1515. Nothing specific uh, what what year or uh, sorry what but, what month or what day yeah. pero 1515 siya pinanganak and yeah go ahead Cleo ah, Say, okay uh, you want me to about, do this yes. okay so si Anne of Cleves was uh, wife number four so like what Shop said it took Henry three years kasi before lagi siyang ano eh, may, may kasunod agad so medyo, okay. nag, medyo nagtagal siya ng three years until he decided to get married um, there were some talks that He wasn't even thinking of remarrying, but he had to because at that time England was um, isolated because he they broke off with the Catholic Church, so they they needed allies. So since they are uh, newly, the, the Church of England is pretty new. They need um, allies, and Sabini Thomas Cromwell, his uh, minister at that time, is chief minister at that time said that maybe it's better to ally ourselves with the German princess because they are uh, Protestants. So he had to they, he had to look for a bride there. And he found Anne of Cleves. But he she wasn't really um, Kenyang number one candidate. There were other two candidates. Pa. One was a, a lady named Christina of Milan who was actually pamangkin siya pamangkin siya ni Catherine of Aragon. She said, she was rumored to have said that she would gladly marry Henry if she had two heads. Kasi yung reputation ni Henry at this time, hindi na masyadong maganda. Imagine oh. we had, you divorced one wife, you beheaded one wife, and one wife died. So it wasn't really very happy. So medyo kung ikaw yung pros- prospective bride, you would think twice. Right. So Christina, that was rumored that what that was what that was what Christina said of course we don't know if it was true but that was sabi yun daw and another candidate was uh, Mary de Guise Mary de Guise was a member of the French royal family the house of Valois diba Valois yeah. the house of Valois, Valois. so see Mary uh, when she heard uh, she was a widow by the way she was a very curvy widow you know description sa kanya So Henry was interested in her, and when she found out that Henry was interested, she decided to get married right away with someone else. <laughs> so, <laughs> binili sa team. Okay, kasi siguro nga again Henry's reputation. So nagpasa siya sa iba. So she married the King of Scots, uh, James the Fifth. Mm-hmm. Right. So James the Fifth was the father of Mary Queen of Scots. So Mary Queen of Scots was the biggest threat to Elizabeth I's reign when Elizabeth became queen. So, And we all know how, how, how that what ended. went down. <laughs> what went <laughs> down. Yeah, what went down. So, ayun na nga. So, si Maddie, Maddie Diggies, she 
she avoided it by marrying someone else. So, sino na lang ang candidate? Si Anne. So, Anne was a German princess. She was um, uh, born in Dusseldorf in uh, Germany, but she spent most of her youth at Schwanenburg, Schwanenburg Schloss, or uh, that's a tr literal translation of Swan Castle, kasi Schwan, 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 pa yan. <laughs> Schwan is swan, and Schloss is uh, castle. Burg means um, like a mountain. Because mm -hmm. it was sitting on top of a, actually top of a hill. So Schwanenburg. So she mm -hmm. spent most of her time there in um, in Cleves. It's a city here in North, North Rhine, Westphalia. West Westphalia, Westphalia. No, teka. Nagmisa na lili to. Kung misa na switch ko to English to German. North Rhine, Westphalia. Ayan, i German lang natin. Ah, there you go. North Rhine, Westphalia, which is the same same state as Cologne, Düsseldorf, uh, the city where I I live, Aachen. So she spent her 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 youth at uh, Schwanenburg Schloss uh, with her sister and her brother, uh, Duke William. So it was Duke William who was the um, ruling uh, prince in that region and Henry decided to ally himself with him. Pero ang nangyari, um, hindi kasi sila mag pwedeng mag magkakilala personally. So Henry sent his court painter, Hans Holbein, to do a portrait. So yan yung nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen. Yes. That's and based on how Holbein saw her. So when Henry saw the portrait, he fell in love. Sabi niya, ang ganda ni Anne. So he agreed to marry her. So Anne went to England. Uh, so she arrived on the 27th of December, 1539. And uh, at that time, hindi pa sila nag nagkita agad. So I think a couple, I think a day or two after, Henry decided to surprise her. <laughs> and <laughs> something, one thing that you need to know about Henry, he loves a great show. He's a showman. Um, kasi the thing, the thing in his court, ang uso ni his court, he loves. So that means yung mga may, may kantaan, may sayawan, may ligawan, may flirtation, all that stuff. So he loves to disguise himself like as Robin Hood and his merry men. Yung pa yung description. Mm -hmm. So he loves to, dis to disguise himself. So he went to see Anne on a disguise. So not the usual regal clothes. And Anne, she didn't know na yun ang trip ni Henry. So when Henry arrived, Anne was surprised because she didn't know who this man was. She was like 20, 21, 23 at that time. And then yeah. Henry was in his 50s. So how would you, how would you react if you're a 20-something young woman and suddenly a 50-year-old man, presumably drunk, Went forward and went forward and kissed you. So you nagina wan Henry. So mm -hmm. na shock na shock si Anne. She didn't know who this man was. Uh, some 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 uh, records say she slapped him. Some said push. She pushed him away. And Anne didn't speak any English at all. And Henry was shocked because of that treatment. Until mm -hmm. sinabi, oh, that's that's the king. So that was when she realized it was her mistake. And after that, Henry decided he doesn't, he didn't like her. Doon na lumabas yung description na she wasn't beautiful at all. Na she, na her portrait was deceiving. Hindi daw ganyan ang itsura ni Anne. He called her the Flanders mare. Kasi she looks like a horse. Yun ang description niya. She looks like a horse. To me, I think that was really unfair. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I doubt if there was truth to it, because judging from the photo that Holbein painted, Anne doesn't look like a horse at all. I mean, ganyan ba siya kapangit para tawaging Flanders mare ni, ni King Henry VIII na parang sobra namang pagkakainsulto yata yeah. sa kanya para para tawagin yang Flanders mayor si si Anne si Cleves oo diba yeah. diba ang unfair and but but i really think it was the, the reaction stemmed more for the rejection yes kasi he since he was on disguise <laughs> but of course everybody knew it was him <laughs> except for Anne yes <laughs> kasi hindi uh, the thing is why didn't people tell Anne that the king is into these stuff 
Yes. Tapos siguro kung sinabi kay Anne, she would have prepared herself. It wouldn't have been like what Lucy Worsley described, the most awkward blind date. Kasi <laughs> <laughs> sobra ba? Diba? Parang um come to think of it, if I were Anne, I, I, I spoke no English at all. Tapos biglang may may biglang mansasalag sasalagin ko na lang yung isang 50 year old na. Teka lang bakit mo ko halikan, 'di ba? Uh, ma- magugulat ka nga naman talaga. So, yeah. Sab- Tsaka para ano yan eh. Kaya may chismis pa din na ah. for a time Henry was angry with Hans Holbein kasi it wasn't <laughs> Anne's likeness. Ewan <laughs> ko ha. Pero but I think it was really more of the fact na he felt insulted because somebody was repulsed at his appearance. <laughs> Exactly, and again, uh, at this point, Henry wasn't the 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 attractive prince at this point anymore. Because he he was like what you said, fifty-ish na. Yeah. Tapos bispa. Na, oh, bispa. Tapos yun nga alam na natin na his 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 um mood swings were uh what they call through the roof if we can mm-hmm. if we can say so, describe it yeah yeah oh diba parang it's, it's not easy uh to walk on eggshells yes um diba when you are working in the court of henry the eighth you, you mm-hmm. have to be on your toes and be ready for a compliment or else you lose your head <laughs> yeah he was already paranoid at that time sabi nga nila there's really a shift in terms of his personality uh-huh. after that jousting accident so yung kanyang uh-huh. mental health ay nag sa start ng mag uh, deteriorate mm-hmm. okay. so yun in the yung parang mga explosion of anger na it was they said the famous tudor temper Mm-hmm. which his daughter Elizabeth inherited I think. Yes. <laughs> yes, we can say we can say that. Well, yeah. well hopefully we'd have uh, a, a time or to discuss um the the life of the daughter, the redhead uh Gloriana. Gloriana uh, in, uh, in the next uh in the next days if ever. Oh, diba? days, so it's really interesting kasi nakakaawa si Anna just because she reacted that way i think it was an innocent mistake <laughs> so she hindi naman niya kasi oh, hindi naman niya kasi hindi naman niya kasi alam so so ayun kawawa naman siya so henry didn't want to marry her but the marriage treaty was already signed and sealed signed and sealed rather Uh-oh. so he had to go through with it So they finally got married on the 6th of January, 1540. But after six months, it was declared um, unconsummated. And I and uh, Anne was also... Because I said that Henry feeling that he's not virgin, si Anne, because mm-hmm. of her body and that she has smells. <laughs> But the thing is, I really think she was a virgin because she didn't know what was going on. Akala niya, she thought, When Henry just kisses her good night, that was it. Yes. So she thought that was it, but it well, kailangan mong gawin more than that para consummate your marriage. Yes. So I think she was very innocent. So obviously she was a virgin. So but still, I think she was smart enough to fight to agree to a divorce. Mm-hmm. And Henry was uh, very generous with her because she agreed. She, uh, she was given estates. She was given a very big allowance. She was um, even given Hever Castle, um, Anne Boleyn's right. home. And uh, thereafter, she was given the title, or she was known as the Queen, the King's beloved sister. So, like what Shopee and I were talking um, off air earlier, she was like uh, second, the second lady. Um, so una yung queen whoever is the queen and then comes her mm-hmm. and then the daughters na so she, Henry appreciated that so that was really very good I think she was really smart no? yes she, she was really she was really smart to agree kasi siguro kung nilaban na yan I don't think she would she would survive Uh-oh. As in, my my, kumbaga, if I were in her position, why would I even insist in mm-hmm. in you know in consummating the marriage when ayo na nga mismo nung hari, de ba? So okay. w- we all know that when the king refuses, he will do everything in his power to really not push through with mm-hmm. with such. And yeah. I, it was already a blessing 
uh, for her to agree to be called the king's beloved, king's sister. beloved sister. And, you know, I'm. She was like, okay, I'm fine with that. I won't push it anymore because mm-hmm. again, you know, I I love my 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 life. I want to I live. <laughs> and, she, and she was. She became one of the richest women landowners. Yes. Because and, of and that. Because of that. So Henry can be very generous. So kung puma, kailangan kung kapag cooperate ka lang, and then he would give you, he would give you a lot of things. So one of them is uh, mga lands and um, a very big um, allowance yearly. Yeah. Right. Okay. She. And yeah. If you're yeah, go gonna look at it, you scratch Henry's back. You he, you sure are gonna be rewarded kumbaga. And mm-hmm. yan yung yan yung nangyari kay, kay Anne. Mm-hmm. and she she lived to see the coronation of of Queen Mary even mm-hmm. and he outlived um the rest of Henry's wives and like uh prior to us going live you mentioned that she never went back to to Dusseldorf anymore right yeah she never went back to Germany even if her brother was telling her to come home uh she didn't and she never remarried there you so, go. Uh, I think she was pretty happy with her life in England. I think she was given a lot more opportunities when she was in England. So I think it was really a good choice that she decided to just stay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ano pa ba? What else do we? Uh, I on, think uh, that's Anne? pretty much that's, um, for Anne? That, that's pretty much about um, Anne of Cleves and okay. and Henry together. We now move on to wife number five. Mm-hmm. Catherine Howard or Kitty Howard. So, as you can see, she was born around 1523, and um, yeah. she she came from a, a yeah. noble family. Yeah. Dinaman. Mm-hmm. She was the daughter yeah. of Lord Edmund How- Howard and Joyce Culpepper. Um, she was a mm-hmm. first cousin to Henry's second wife Anne Boleyn, um, and niece to Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk. So, bale, um, sister. Uh, her mother mother is no 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 her father her father was related to the mother of of Anne yeah parang magkapatid or magpili I know I think magkapatid ano ba yan magkapatid (laughs) magkapatid that's why they were first magpinsang buo sila ni Anne Uh uh-uh so, the bang the Howards and the Boleyns are mm-hmm. known to be a, a very formidable ba, uh, bunch. Kumbaga, fa- yeah. a bunch. Nung nung time nung 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 early life pa ni Henry mm-hmm. ni Henry the Eighth, right? Prior to him setting his eyes on Mary and and Anne, the Howards and the Boleyns, they're like yeah. really really yeah. known noble clans, kumbaga, mm-hmm. and. Um, Thomas Howard was a prominent politician at Henry's court, and he secured her a place in the household of Henry's fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, where that that was the that was the point where he caught the the eye of the fifty-ish king <laughs> at that point. So during that time, ulcerated na itong hari natin, uh, he 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 had really giant mood swings, and mm-hmm. again. Um, it was um, quite difficult for him to to get up, I guess. Yes. Yes. Mm. So, kailangan daw ng mga uh, a couple of men to carry him, to carry him out of bed, to help him walk because it was really very difficult. Na rin since he mm-hmm. didn't have exercise, so right, he was really getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, it was 400, it was 400 pounds. For, na, 400, 400. He, was, he was close to 400 pounds, and he was he was no longer that handsome, six to mm. athletic hot king that he was <laughs> when he, he when he reigned. So, he, uh, wala na, well, ang kanyang glory days are over. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. kailangan. So, sabi niya, sabi nga ng mga uh, historians, Kitty Howard made him feel young again. Kaya siya na attract din. Kasi she was um, a very bubbly girl. Mm-hmm. So, yun la Yun ang ano. <laughs> yun yung nangyari nung time na yun. So, she was part of Anne of Cleves' um, Ladies in Waiting. Mm-hmm. The, that's when, um, sh- that's where she caught the, uh, that's where King Henry saw her. And then eventually, syempre, alam naman natin, kapag nagustuhan ka ng hari, eh, kailangan makuha ka. So, that's what happened. She she married him. 
on the 28th of uh, July in 1540, and this happened in Oatlands, Oatlands Palace in Surrey, um, just 19 days after the annulment of uh, the marriage with with Anne, who became, you know, the king's beloved sister uh, during this time. Oh, nagmamadali na naman siya kahit na alam naman nating lahat na may anak na siya nung panahon na to. Sige pa rin, gusto pa rin niyang kumaga hanggat maaari. Meron pa siyang may spare siya siguro. Yeah. Yun yung iniisip yeah. niya. That's diba? Mm -hmm. um, and the king was 49. And I mean, for you to get married to a 49-year-old and you were 17, parang... Old enough to be your dad. Exactly. Um, and she wasn't when when she got married to Henry. She wasn't even given any responsibility because she was very young, seventeen. Mm -hmm. I mean, and unlike the other wives of King Henry, um, Catherine was not, you know, well educated as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. She so she wasn't you know as well educated as the other um wives but she knows how um how to read and write how uh, to have and, fun. <laughs> uh, and how to have fun and it was already impressive for for a woman at that time for you to know how to read and and how to write mm -hmm. and she was she wasn't known to be that modest because of um where she grew up particularly but her character was known to be vivacious giggly and brisk not scholarly or devout mm -hmm. so kumbaga, she was really um a fun loving um young woman so mm -hmm. who loves to dance who really loves to express herself and she has also a nurturing side for animals particularly dogs mm -hmm. and it was just unfortunate that she ended um being wife number five to to henry um when in fact I, I don't think she really knew anything of her agency she she was just young and you know mm -hmm. uh it was just okay he's the king so all right i'll marry him parang ganun lang yung mm -hmm. dating sa akin in ni catherine eh. uh she had no apparent choice yeah so to speak yeah, what she, are your was, thoughts that? she wasn't really given any good advice, I guess. Um, and again, she said she was a teenager. Ano bang, what were you doing when you were 17? You were, you were much concerned with having fun. You, you don't, siguro the biggest problem you have when you were a girl at 17 is, uh, ano ba, saan ako magsha-shopping? Anong, diba? It, it wasn't, she, she was young. She didn't, have anybody to advise her i mean somebody older who would give her good advice no one was there and yeah. like what you said her childhood wasn't exactly very ideal uh -huh. as she grew up in uh the household of her step-grandmother the dowager duchess of norfolk and the and uh, Hindi is as a as a little girl, she wasn't well protected. Um, men can come and go. That's why uh, she had her first sexual experience with her music teacher when she was, I think, what, 11, 12? Barely a teenager. So what would you expect? It, it wasn't really the best kind of life no. that she was presented with. And that's the reason why she just gave in when when the king saw her uh probably gave her the nicest of things you know mm -hmm. as um, when you're a young woman and you're being wooed by none other than the king of england Shempre, you would really feel very special and that to me i think was one of the reasons why catherine allowed herself to to be the the mm -hmm. fifth um wife of king henry regardless of his appearance and regardless of his age and she was showered with 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 gifts anyway with uh, it was known that she was um clothed in really lavish gowns when she uh wedded henry Kumbaga, every single day iba iba yung mm -hmm. mga gowns niya and that was no joke syempre mm -hmm. during that time to to be to wear the grandest of garbs yes. uh during those that time would really mean that uh, you you are you are special to to mm -hmm. the king yes. and um kumbaga, the king really gave parang tuwang tuwa lang sa kanya siguro si si henry <laughs> sabi niya, 
sabi nga nung ibang ano mga contemporaries yung mga witnesses who saw them together when of course he was already um he couldn't really move that much anymore he couldn't uh-huh. dance with her so he would have somebody else dance with her sabi the way he looked at her he looked like a doting grandfather <laughs> <laughs> yung tuwan-tuwa siya kasi nga daw she made him feel young again and in fairness naman daw to Catherine she was very affectionate kasi yeah. binibigyan siya di ba ni Henry and, ano. kasi people would say oh she was the slut she was the one who slept around but if you will look at a, a different side of Catherine of Kitty she was appreciative of what Henry gave her Pinibigyan, so she she sinusuklian niya with affection she's sweet to him uh, she she would take care of him so kahit na repulse ang mga tao sa smell coming out of his leg she will be there she would tend to him so i think that's one of the good things that she did for him yeah she diba? was kind yeah. enough she was to, kind oh. to show affections mm-hmm. in, in, in that way and it just so happened that You know, she was young. She had needs, and yeah. she she kind of fell in love, I guess. Yeah. Siguro sabihin na natin na na in love siya. Pero the the point is, she really didn't know how to uh, manage her 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 secret life, mm-hmm. and uh, that's the reason why everything got exposed. Mm-hmm. And in she uh, what they call this, she was tried for treason. For committing adultery with a, with a distant cousin, and his name is Thomas Culpepper. Um, uh, there were uh, actual proofs of her love letters to mm-hmm. to Thomas. There was, I think, one that uh, was still uh, still out there. And kumaga, I think yun lang yung nagsurvive na love letter niya kay Thomas. And um, yun na yung isa sa mga nagsil ng deal ng faith niya. Uh, aside from uh, the the former wife of uh, his cousin, her cousin rather, yeah, yeah. na uh, uh, na um, the the wife of Anne's brother uh, uh, Jane. testified. Uh, mm-hmm. Jane Rochford testified against her, de Because Kasi it, the woman was also questioned by. Um, by the people of Henry's court. So mm. that's what that's happened. Right. It's so sad because she was so young. And um, before I really thought that she was just uh, a shadow of some promiscuous, that was what I thought of her. But Me too. Uh, after reading after reading other details about her life and then of course uh, lucy worsley uh, this very wonderful british historian um she also exposed um details such as um uh she was probably probably um sexually abused when she was young and then with thomas culpepper he was a known womanizer so it was probable that he seduced her so she was more of a sexually abused child in yung kaya nga para sa ko oh, nga no it is possible na parang na demonize lang siya masyado na slut promiscuous and stuff but to think of come to think of it it is possible that she was um, an abused child right um it just so happened na kumbaga history perceived her differently mm-hmm. and that wasn't Uh, it wasn't really um, nice uh, for of of how history depicted her all throughout these years. When in fact, uh, I, I, again, you were just thrown into that kind of life. You never had a choice. choice yeah. So, and that's the reason how you ended um, the, in the worst way. Because unlike Anne, she didn't have the privilege of of having um, a swordsman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a sla- that, that, was the, that was the cleaner, swifter death. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but what happened to her was she she met her death with an axe. Yeah. And we all know before you, you actually die, you will be hacked many times. <laughs> but I think with her case, it was with just one blow. Oh, oh thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I mean, come to think she's... Yeah, very young and um it was also said that she wanted to prepare herself so she yeah. asked for the block to be brought to her room so she could practice oh. so that when she so that when she, her execution day comes she knows what to do she wouldn't be nervous so she, imagine what i think that would take a lot of strength yeah just to see the 
the block and then practice, di ba? Um, I think she. I, I can. I I think she faced it with bravery, and her, di ba? I really felt sad for her. That's why, medyo na, di ba? Ang bata bata niya, and then she was thrown in this kind of life. She wasn't given very good advice. She didn't know what to do. Diba? So, ganon. And I really was, I really ended up admiring her. Not because she, I didn't, I, I don't condone yung act of adultery niya, but kudos to her being brave to face death. So that's very, yeah. very admirable. Mm-hmm. So she ended up uh, being, being hacked to death February 13 of 15. 15- 42. So that to, uh, that to you guys is Catherine Howard, the fifth wife of Henry VIII. And now we move on to the sixth and final wife, hey, Catherine hey, hey. R. So, ito na tayo. So, um, this lady, she was born around 1512. And um, she, as uh, we've mentioned, she's the last of the six wives of Henry VIII and the final queen consort of the House of Tudor. So I was asking Cleo earlier how she, uh, she and Henry crossed paths. Apparently, she was what again, Cleo? <laughs> like, again, I'm not really sure if this is true or not. But at that time, she was married to her fourth husband. Yeah, Lord Latimer. Okay, so, she was, so she was still Lady Latimer at that time. So she, I think she was at court to petition something to Henry, and that was when Henry saw her. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I think that's how they met. Mm-hmm. But I think Henry already knew her beforehand because her mother, was it her mother? Yeah, her mother was Lady in Waiting to Catherine of Aragon. So oh, she. There. So she was most likely. Um, okay, man, I feel soft. Okay, take a look. ko lang ng inumin tong aking. Sure, go ahead. Ng aking senorito. Anyway, gagawin ko while I do while I do this while I do this. So she was her mother was a lady in waiting during uh, Catherine of Aragon's time, and it was most probable that she was educated alongside Princess Mary. Kaya mag kaya. I, I think Henry knew her when she was young, and then they crossed crossed paths again when she was already married. So matagal na pala sila siguro magkakilala. Again, yun lang, yun lang nabasa ko pinakahuli. Na she, uh-huh. she knew him when she was younger, or she was still a child. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> no, Pero like, itong ano na to, parang ang nangyari na lang dito. For yeah. me, how I, the way I see it, it was just like a marriage of for Can convenience yeah. and companionship. Mm-hmm considering how Henry was, uh, Henry's state when he married Catherine, um, Catherine Howard, right? So mm-hmm. he was already in his ulceratic state. Um, <laughs> uh, his mood swings were, were through the roof. And again, he was really a he- heavy and obese and he, he barely can get out of, mm-hmm. of bed. Pero ito si Catherine, she was, you know, kind enough to show him affection and really respect uh, him as a king. And the thing was, itong ano natin, itong sixth wife natin na to, she's known to be a, another headstrong personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, uh, she, she, she's very into writing. And in fact, she was the first woman to publish under her own name in English in England. And because of that she almost lost her head as well yeah. mm-hmm. uh, because of how feisty and how headstrong she was can you tell us more about that ah, okay so i read um, a couple of articles about her and there was a novel about her by philippa gregory and the title was so apt uh, taming the queen <laughs> taming the queen so she was very she was highly intelligent uh and uh, she like what shop said that she was the very first woman to publish her own book in her own name and at that time henry supported because people might think okay why would henry support this i mean he's all macho and doesn't think that women can do stuff like that henry thought of it as only a hobby <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so kaya si, kaya he supported uh, that venture. So she she also took an interest in the education of her stepchildren, uh, Mary, uh, Elizabeth, and of course Edward, the young prince. So yeah. she she was also a, a devout Protestant. Um, she supported the Reformation, 
that's why when Shop said that she almost lost her head, she was pushing for the reformation. So she she said that she wanted to use her position to influence it. E kaso si Henry was nga, like said many shops, he was already in that state where you have to walk with eggshells around him. Uh, you have to be careful of what you said because you might end up in the tower and eventually lose your life. So she she would engage him in religious debates. So so marami na iinis na mga counselors ni Henry kasi she was she, she was it seemed like she was trying to lecture the king and and Henry thought oh nga no she she seemed like she was trying to lecture me so they had an argument about it and uh, that was when this was during the time that a warrant for her arrest is on the way because of mm-hmm. her being such a ref, a reformer so pay paparating ng uh, warrant for her arrest and she was with the king and she was she knew what would happen so she was smart enough to uh try to save herself so she used tears yeah ladies <laughs> use that effective on tears so like <laughs> why are you upset and she said uh, because you don't come to see me i don't spend time with you you don't want to see you don't want to spend time with me so so sinabi ni Henry because you feel like you are you are you are you claim to lecture your own husband. So sabi lang ni ano ni Catherine that wasn't her purpose as uh, since she she wanted to engage him in uh, a friendly conversation, a friendly debate so that he doesn't remember yung sakit niya because he was already so sick at that time and Catherine, she said, I was just trying to, you know, um, take your mind away from the pain. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I don't lecture. I mean, I'm, uh, I, I come here, to, I'm here to learn from my husband. So, Bejo, pinuri puri nga, compliment niya, and that worked. <laughs> so, thankfully so, it sab- worked. Thankfully it worked. So, sabi ni Henry, we are friends again. So she saved her life. She the warrant was torn up, was torn into pieces by Henry. So she that's why she was the the wife who survived. Mm-hmm. Who survived, and she even had the the chance of you know publishing her book in English. Yes. That that was prayers uh, or meditations, and then another uh, another book, uh, the Lamentation of a Sinner, was also published. So she was quite uh, an established woman for yeah. for her time i mean to publish two books mm-hmm. and uh still um have your head intact uh, <laughs> is definitely an, an achievement if you, yes. you're gonna ask me and for for you to surpass that while henry was still alive is all uh, it is definitely a success on your on her end Yes, it is. It, she was successful in that manner, and of course, she uh, since she had four previous husbands, she ended up being a caregiver yes, to Henry yes. during the last couple of years of his life. So I think that was also one of her. That was her crowning glory. She was I like more of a companion uh, to Henry compared mm-hmm. to you know, there was no pressure of. There was no pressure at all of conceiving, but there were some reports that he still wanted the spare. But I think he didn't much pressured to conceive because he had Edward. Chaka, oh. she, like you've also mentioned here that uh, she uh, was instrumental in um, having Princess Mary and Princess Elizabeth be included in the line of succession again. Right. So she she really um she she made she found a way for those two girls to be um part of the line of success. Kasi there was a point that they were declared illegitimate. Eh. Mm-hmm. That's so, right. So pivotal siya for for that to happen. And if I were Elizabeth, I would definitely be grateful um mm-hmm. for for her for her kumbaga for her role in yes. placing me back kumbaga, in into the line of succession so it just so happened that um henry uh had i mean 
Henry, kumbaga, they didn't last long enough. Mm-hmm. Henry and her. Oh, and it's also uh, when she when I think when Henry was sensing that his death was near, he called uh, his wife together and his children to say goodbye for the last time. And he had his ministers promise that they will treat her well even after he died. Right. So you would feel that I think in some way he appreciated her. Uh, he valued her. So I to think na pinag-isipan pa niya kung i- na ipag- ipagbili na oh, you have to treat her well even after I die. So that, right. was, that, and, was, that was really good. Mm-hmm. And then um, after his death, uh, she was allowed to keep the, the jewels and the, dresser, the dresses, um, uh, her being the queen dowager during mm-hmm. the time of Henry's death. And she married the fourth and um, final husband, Thomas Seymour, na somehow na intertwined in kay Elizabeth if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yes. Uh-uh. Na intertwined then, yeah. Kasi when as actually Tom Seymour was the one she wanted to marry after Lord Latimer died. Pero Henry got attracted to her. So he sent old him love. Uh, old love, yeah, it was an old love. So sent Henry sent him to Ireland <laughs> to get him out of oh. the way. <laughs> so Diba? Like, to get him out of the way, sent him to Ireland. And uh, they rekindled their romance after Henry died. So they got married. Uh, uh, and Elizabeth came to live with them. That's That was where her relationship with Tom Seymour developed, sabi nga nila. That there was yeah. something going on between Elizabeth and Thomas Seymour. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. So that was the yung may mga instances pa na anyway that was for another that's for another time but um, I I'm sure that during that time Thomas already showed some interest in Elizabeth even when Catherine was still alive yeah, <laughs> yeah I believe so I believe so that nagpakita uh, nasa ng motibo kay Elizabeth even before so sabi nga nila eh pa, pa, I'm sure Catherine has noticed it um, that's why I think there was a time that. Uh, she sent Elizabeth away because she already noticed it. Na parang siguro na 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 bother na siya masyado with how Thomas was being too close to Elizabeth. So she sent her away. Kasi nga oh. diba at first guardian guardian nga lang yung yung role ni ni Catherine at ni Thomas. And pra, even prior to this, hindi naman sila agad agad na na ipakasal ni Thomas kasi hindi parang may mga peep, may mga uh, I don't know people from court who in agreement f- yeah. with her um, marrying or remarrying because of of her position yeah. so that's why that's the reason why kumbaga, it took her six mm-hmm. months pa before she was able to to marry or remarry re- sorry marry um, Thomas Thomas uh-huh. Seymour who eventually became a guardian to Elizabeth mm-hmm. and they said that the reason why they also got married they they got approved to get married because uh, Thomas Seymour was a favorite uncle of Edward the king at that time Edward mm-hmm. VI tama ba oh, tama, Edward VI so favorite uncle is yeah. Thomas so i think that's also uh, another reason why they got approved later on but again like what you said it took quite some time for them uh, to be allowed to marry because you can't really marry in secret well you can but of course you could you risk it <laughs> yes yeah. would you um kahit ba sabihin natin na wala na si kumbaga wala na yung wala si Henry mm-hmm. still uh, you have to respect who mm-hmm. whoever is what was um was uh, was leading mm-hmm. the monarchy during the time and it was um Edward technically although kumbaga yung may regent may pay, siya, yeah oh, may regent siya, diba? mm-hmm. so ayun nang nangyari so but um all's well that ends well she was able to marry Thomas and surprisingly she conceived but uh you know due to complications of childbirth uh, her her life was taken. Unfortunately, on the fifth of September, fifteen forty eight, Catherine Parr died, and yun nga, she was the last um, wife of Henry Tudor. And we all know um, what happened afterwards. Who who assumed the throne afterwards? It was of course his son Edward the sixth, mm-hmm. and later Queen Mary, and then Elizabeth. So. Yay! Yay! We were able to, to, to finish all 
Oo. Pero ay, hindi pala. After diba? pala, after after pala, siya, pala, eh. after pala si Edward, si Jane Grey muna, and then si Mary na. Oo oh, nga pala. So, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pala. But that's for Seven another day. Nine days. Oo. Oh, oh. uh, yeah. Nine so, days. So, um, i- respeto naman kay Jane. Nine, naman. nine days queen. Just the nine day queen, si Jane Grey, who was a cousin. Yon. But anyway, yes. it was really it was really interesting that we, we were able to talk about the last four. Yay! Yay, yay. Yeah, yeah, diba? Congratulations to you, the two of us. <laughs> Akala ko hahaba kasi, but anyway, it was good that we were able to talk about these four ladies. Ayun. I, I just want to read a comment ah, from Mel. Uh, Mel Alonso Ramos, she was uh, uh, a college friend. Uh, she said, appreciate how rich your discussions are. You're making it easy for everyone to understand this part of history. Kudos to both of you. Thank you, Mel. I hope you like it. And um, please feel free to... Please feel free to uh, share your thoughts, uh, your comments, the mga nakapanood, uh, suggestions then. So for the next topics, that would be that would be great. Okay. Ano pa po na, Do we have anything more uh, shops with the slides or whatever? Uh, for the slides, uh, we've already covered all um, four remaining wives. So uh-huh. that's basically it. And it's just like a par- the, our parting words um, mm-hmm. for, for this um, uh, episode, actually. But for next um, episode, we're looking to talk about a little bit about Valentine's Day. Uh-oh. We'll talk about since Valentine's Day na next week. We'll talk about nigawan or courtship. Like, ano ba yung... Ano ano ba yung uh, ataw dito? Hindi naman hindi just ko na, wala namang history ang courtship. Yung paano ba manligo ang mga tao noong araw? Paano manligo yung mga let's say pre-colonial uh, pre-colonial mm-hmm. Philippines ganyan kung paano paano ba yung form of courtship? Paano mo ipapakita na ang ah, yung motibo? <laughs> so we were we we will do that on Valentine's Day. So kung may suggestion, kung meron kayong comments na yung mga mga mudrakels at mga pudrakels namin, so paano ba kayo nang ligo noon, di ba? So you could share that as well. Um so paano ba ang courtship pre-colonial um colonial Spain, tama? And of course how other people from different countries mm-hmm. also to their courtship. Pag usapan natin since it's Valentine, Valen- Valentine's, ba- Valentine's Day, Valentine's, so, uh, Valentine's Day. No, no, so we're, not, we're mm-hmm. looking forward to that. So, um, February 14 mismo. Oh, oh tama tama. We will go. Kung wala, yeah, kung wala kayong date or kung ano, kung date ang naman kayo sa bahay, then maybe you could tune in and join in the discussion. It would be nice, you know, to see a lot of comments, make it an actual live discussion. It would be, it would be really great. Yon. So same time din naman, 4 p.m. So yes. kung wala kayong gagawin, if, if you will stay home. Or even yung mga singles, di ba? Paano, ba, paano, paano yung mga singles sa Valentine's sa Paano yung mga singles nung araw? How do they catch a husband? Yung mga ganun. Parang Bridgerton lang. Oh, yan ay Bridgerton. Parang Bridgerton lang. It's marriage season. Yes. Yeah, Leon. Yeah. So yeah. are you part of, ano, part of the ton? Uh, are you gonna be presented to the, to, to, uh, what they call it, the, the London um, society. public Mm-mm. society? Uh-oh. kumbaga so yon kailangan mo nang makaharap ng asawa yes but i think in this day and age hindi na, hindi na talaga yung maaga nagsisipag asawa unlike before hindi na ganun Uh-oh. so we will also yeah we could you know, let's make it uh, let's let's make it uh, casual let's make it informal doing the discussion on february 14 okay so ayun yes. na. so thank you Thank you, thank you guys for, for tuning in and for those who keep on supporting us in Gab Mentality, thank you. And again, guys, a reminder, history isn't supposed to be boring. It's part of every fiber of our being. Tandaan kung wala tayong, wala tayong saisay kung walang kasaysayan. So guys, with that said, uh, we'll see you guys on February 14th. Yes, it's a date on February 14th. 
Right. So I hope that you guys stay safe. Um, this um video will um you, you can watch this on replay later on. So after this uh, live is live as end, live session has ended, then my kitten is show that so you can always go back to it. Um and of course I just want to show you we are on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, so follow us on Instagram, Gavin Tati 2020. Ayan. And of course, we're also on Twitter. Pero mas maganda siguro kung Instagram. Pero bala kayo kasi mga gusto kong i-follow. <laughs> Ito yung aming Twitter account. Gavin Tati. Follow lang ng follow. Follow lang ng follow. So, ayan. ayan. Thank you. So, thank you, guys. Thank you so much and stay safe and take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.